This is Just The Job. Hi, and welcome to Just The Job, the show that could help you discover your perfect career. Now, we got off to a great start last week with our deep sea fishing special, and this week, we're back to bringing you three more exciting career opportunities that could get you thinking. In today's show, Jordan gets up close and personal with some grapes in Blenheim to find out how they get from the vine to the bottle. Bevan likes helping people and getting involved in projects, so we see if the public health system could provide him with just the job. And our other Jordan this week has a keen interest in design, so we're sending him to check out a career in motor trimming where he'll certainly need that eye for detail. But first up, let's join Jordan, who is at the Allen Scott Vineyard in Blenheim, to find out all she can about the fascinating world of viticulture. Hi, my name's Jordan Gibbs, and I'm from Picton. I attend Queen Charlotte College there, and today I'm looking at a career in viticulture. Viticulture is the science, production, and study of grapes. So Jordan has travelled 30 kilometres from her home in Picton to Blenheim, the heart of the Marlborough wine growing district, where she'll be spending a couple of days at the Allen Scott Vineyard. Hi, my name's Jordan. G'day Jordan, I'm Ra Hibbard. I'm the vineyard manager here at Allen Scott Wines. I understand you're interested in a career in viticulture. Yeah, looking into it. Excellent. Should we go for a drive and have a look around? Yeah, that'd be cool. So, Ra, can you tell us about the size of the vineyard here? The Allen Scots, they have um, approximately 80 hectares. The grapes all seem to be planted in rows, is that for any particular reason? Do they go a certain way? Yeah, um, the north-south facing, uh, purely for the sun, basically. The vineyard's quite large. How many people do you have here working to actually run it? There's six permanent staff that um, look after it, and we use contractors as well. How about we have a look at some vines? Yeah, that'd be cool. Excellent. What we've got here is, is a rootstock, and we've got the plant. They're grafted together, and then the outcome is, is, is what we see here today. So why is it actually a different rootstock to the rest of the plant? It's phylloxera resistant. Now, phylloxera is a um, bug, and it gets amongst the roots um, and just eats the root out, basically. Over time, it will kill the plant. The main piece we have here is, is, is birds. And here's a good example of um, bird peck. Um, you can see where it's just burst the berry there. Well, how do you cure that or stop it from happening in the first place? Basically, you've got to get rid of the birds. Um, we net most of ours, and, and a lot of people use bangers, mm. just fire off like a shotgun sound. Um, Josh, you're the, you're the winemaker here, so you make the decision on when it's time to harvest the grapes. What do you base that decision on? Um, oh, it's on a few things. It's a collective decision between the, the winery and the vineyard, but. Mainly it's just about the taste of the grapes. So are these grapes over here, are they ready to be harvested yet? Um, we can have a try. Yep, no, they're good to go. Except for the really high quality grapes, hand picking is a thing of the past. Nowadays harvesting is highly mechanised and is done very quickly indeed. After the great harvest in late summer, the next big job is to prune the vines. And it has to be done by hand. It's time for Jordan to start work. Right, Jordan, here we've got our, um, our plant. Now, what we try and do is, 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 is clear space in the head. Imagine a, the shape of a vase. That's what we're going to try and prune to. For a start, we always take out the old wood. Leave this here. We always leave three canes in case you break one when you're wrapping down. Like this. Wrap that down again. You want to make it reasonably tight, but not so tight that you come next season that you can't strip it out. And that's how you to plant. Next one's yours. Yep, that one could come out. That one there would be a good one to leave. Mm -hmm. Yep, take that one off. Yep, that's the lateral come off the side of it. Excellent. It's finished. Number one pruner. The main way that the vines are kept healthy is by spraying to keep the bugs off the plants and the weeds down amongst the roots. A regular spray regime is a major part of vine management. Time for Jordan to have a driving lesson. Away we go. Wait till the trailer's out. 
Bet. Doing all right. Where do I go from here? Let's go straight out. Yeah. Piece of cake. Try and stay in the middle as much as you can. Yeah. So what do you think? That was actually pretty cool. I like that. Philip Heather is an apprentice at the Allen Scott Vineyard and today is a big day as he is presented with his national certificate level four in viticulture. And why be qualified? Why not just carry on with what you're doing without the qualifications? Um, recognition. If I ever wanted to go for another job, then I can just show them the qualifications and I'd be more likely to get another job. Um, vineyards such as Alan Scott's here, there are millions of dollars worth investments and good employers are going to look after those investments by ensuring they've got trained staff. As Jordan has seen, the work of a viticulturalist is varied throughout the year and includes pruning, spraying, controlling pests, maintaining machinery, irrigation pumps, filters, irrigation lines and wires. Done right, the harvest will reap good grapes and make great New Zealand wines. So, is this just the job for Jordan? I actually reckon this, um, this job in Korea has got a lot going for it because it's, you know, it's outdoors and the, because it's such a big industry now, you don't really know what's going on until you have a good look on the inside and see how it really works. If she wants to take, take it on, yeah, she'd, she'd go pretty well. We could have her on board actually and do a bit of work. There is a national certificate in horticulture with a specialised viticulture strand. Trainees can start with national certificate in horticulture level 2 and work their way through to level 4 advanced. As the studies progress, so trainees do more work on the viticulture area. There is a big demand for trained viticulturalists in New Zealand's growing wine industry. With hundreds of vineyards all over New Zealand, career progression can be excellent and the qualifications gained are recognised all over the world. Well, a career in viticulture is certainly a great option if you enjoy the outdoor life. After the break, we're going to catch up with Bevan and see if he has the right stuff when it comes to the skills needed to become a public health program coordinator. This is Just The Job. Welcome back to Just The Job. Are you up to a challenging, action-focused career that achieves results? Well, then public health has many exciting and diverse careers where the work you do can impact the lives of many families and their communities. Well, this next career incorporates all those skills and is definitely challenging and rewarding as Bevan finds out. Hi, I'm Bevan and I'm really into helping people and doing projects and so I thought I'd give program coordination a go in the public health area. There are a number of program coordinator roles who work within the public health sector. Their role is to coordinate and plan schemes to better public health. So we've sent Bevan along to meet Jessica, a travel plan coordinator helping organisations with their transport problems for the benefit of public health. Hi, I'm Jessica. I'm Bevan. Hi Bevan, come on through. Jessica's role as a programme coordinator helps businesses and organisations to identify areas that need improving, set some goals and put into place an action plan for achieving them. Her role focuses on strategies to reduce traffic congestion and road crash injury, improve air quality and aims to build lifetime habits of physical fitness in young people. We want congestion to go down in Auckland and for people to be thinking when they get in the car, maybe I could walk instead, maybe I could carpool, just for it to be natural. So then once we get to the end of that, that's the stage where we're saying this has been a success and then next time we start up another project we'll be able to use those learnings to make another project a success. All right. So it keeps going and going and going. Yeah. Is it a desk job or are you out and about quite a lot? It's about 50-50, so this afternoon we're going to go out to the airport. Over 12,000 staff work at the airport, and with most driving their own cars to work, it's a problem for congestion and the environment. Auckland Regional Transport Authority has worked with the airport for two years on their lift project. Solutions have included special buses with concession rates for staff and parking permits to reward carpooling. OK, Bevan, so we've got a couple of um, flight attendants from Emirates who yep. have signed up for the carpooling. This is a good opportunity for us to just ask a few questions about how they heard about the scheme and really just to, you know, welcome them to the programme. I'll give it a go. Wonderful. Good luck. <laughs> Hi, guys. Thanks for um, registering with Lyft. Here are your parking permits. It's one per person, so make sure they're displayed on the dashboard for each person. So where does this allow us to park? They actually get to a priority car parks, which are a lot closer to the terminal. 
happy because I work on lots of different projects, like with workplaces or with schools. That means that there is a lot of variety in what I do every day, which I really love. At Waitakere Primary School, Principal Heather Atkinson has a headache managing congestion every morning outside the school gates. For our 476 children who need to be delivered, it's mainly by car. Right. It's a huge issue. Getting kids on the school bus or the walking school bus is a solution, obviously, to the congestion. And the solution is a raging success. So, <laughs> I'm getting the feeling that this is a slightly sort of different walking bus than normal. I think well, it's the pony. Oh, I think so too. <laughs> and taking the pony with us makes a lot of the cars slow down and take notice. The program coordinator has assisted us in setting up the walking school bus. They've advised us on where we can get funding, where we can get resources, and really without that kind of support, it would make it doubly difficult for me to access that kind of um, information. It's just a school because you get to walk to school every morning and you get lots of exercise and you get really fit in case you're doing like marath marathons and stuff. Whilst Jessica saves the city from the traffic monster... Good morning, Body Safe. Kate speaking. Another programme coordinator works with an even tougher public health issue. And, you know, this can include, you know, rape sexual abuse, molestation, all these sort of terms that they may have heard, but drawing them together as what is sexual violence. Kate manages a team who go out to schools um, and educate youth on the issue of sexual violence. I do the day-to-day -day running of the program, um, coordinating with schools when the workshops are going to be held, um, in which term. Term 3 starts 20th of July. I also help to run the crisis line um, or information line, people wanting information help or sometimes needing immediate help. I also help to run development of materials and also uh, workforce development within the education team that I coordinate. And I also help to uh, liaise with different organisations who we work with who also have a youth focus. There's many different public health issues facing our communities. With easy access to the internet, teenage gambling is on the rise. Tubbs coordinates programs aimed at educating youth and families about the problem. So, um, yeah. what's all this? Oh, no, uh, just laying out some information for raising the awareness of youth gambling in the Avondale community. Oh, yeah. This is just one part of our, our work. We like to meet people, and it's not just presentations yeah, or workshops we do in schools and churches, but outside on the footpath where you engage with the young people, engage with the parents, engage with the community every day because, hey, they always walk by and there's always someone that's interested in what you're doing. This is your first customer, mate. Hey, yeah. mate, can we just have a quick chat? Oh, yeah. We're just raising awareness about uh, gambling and problem oh, okay. gambling. Do you, um, do you spend a lot of time online at all? Uh, online, I do, yeah. yeah, yeah. Do you, yeah. you and your friends have a gamble at all? Uh, I've been tempted to it. Tempted? <laughs> yeah. With hotline numbers and websites on good to go items, youth are just a mouse click away from internet solutions for internet gambling. And Tubbs, as a program coordinator, has been the key from analysing the data to tailoring solutions and bringing community groups together. I will rate 7, 10 out of 10 as a public health program coordinator. I think he was excellent. He did well in a role like this. I've really enjoyed um, being a program coordinator. I thought at the start that I was a bit more into the stats and the research and all that sort of thing, but um, I've thought that I built on my people skills throughout the, this experience and it's been real fun. Program coordination is not a beginning role in public health, but experience in project management, communication and other general work experience will usually set a person up nicely for this role. You will need to have a well-rounded education and useful school subjects would include English, maths and information technology. Other useful skills include the ability to communicate well, gather information and analyse data, and manage different people and organisations through a project to its completion. So do you think the challenge of being a public health programme coordinator could be for you? We can find out more about this career and all the careers featured throughout our entire series on our website. After the break, we catch up with Jordan and see if he has the eye for a hands-on job. This is Just The Job. You're watching Just The Job, and if you're trying to figure out what career path to follow, then make sure you tune into our series each week, because this show could spark a turning point when it comes to your work life. We're going to catch up with Jordan from Hawke's Bay now. He's interested in design, and he's going to find out that that's just one of the elements that makes a successful motor trimmer. My name's Jordan Walsh, and I'm looking at a career in motor trimming. From seats to covers to carpet, motor trimming is part of the industrial textile fabrication industry. The work may involve restoring classic cars, as well as fitting out the carpets, seats and fabric surrounds to boats, 
yachts and super yachts. Charman Motor Trimmers and Upholsterers carry out a huge range of motor trimming and Charman's was recognised with the Off Pans Apprentice of the Year in 2008. The company's managing director is Kimber Buglis. Hi Jordan, how are you? Good, how are you? Come on through. Kimber takes Jordan through the company's safety procedures before they suit up for the first job of the day. Hey Jordan, what we're going to do now is uh, take the seat off this bike. As you can see it's got a tear in it. That's it. Cool. Right, we'll turn this over. What we're going to do is remove all the staples around the base. Yeah, just do one corner, turn it, that's it. Motor trimming involves basically the interiors of cars, planes, trains, boats, seating, carpets, headlining, right across the board. Excellent. I'll get you to go over and see Paul now and uh, he'll show you how to mark one out and do some screening on the back of the cover. Hi Jordan, Paul, how are you? Good, how are you? Good. Right, this is uh, one of our patents here for this uh, motorbike seat cover here. And we just want to um, lay it out on the vinyl as economically as possible. Just use uh, just this Chinograph pencil here and you just um, mark around the outside. Hold it down with a weight, keep it in place and just go for it, mark it out. Sweet. Marking out's the, uh, the most important part of the job. Um, it's really getting all your marks to line up and all the nicks, if they don't put on the, on the material properly, then you'll find that uh, when they come to sew it, if they don't line up, then you, your job's a failure. It has to be uh, the precision of marking is the most important part in, in the trimming trade. OK, now that you've marked around, we can go ahead and cut it out now. Great job. <laughs> he can handle a pencil, but how good is he at cutting? Yeah, speed uh, comes with uh, as age is in the trade. But uh, to start off with, we always uh, encourage them to make sure they do it slowly to start off with and get it right. Uh, and then later on down the track, they'll find that that hand-eye coordination with the scissors comes in. Great. That's a good job of cutting it out. You've uh, you stayed on the line on that. Uh, that's perfect. OK, Jordan, this is where we do the screen printing. We're going to use this here. We're going to use this, this Honda logo here, and we'll screen it onto the vinyl there. Basically, you need a flair for detail, a um, bit of artistic flair that helps, a um, bit of imagination, saying, thinking that before you start the job what it's going to look like when it's finished. Um, and hopefully, uh, with the skills that you pick up through the trade, you'll uh, see that at the end result when the job's completed. Oh, good, Jordan, that's well done. Okay, we'll get you to sew that together soon. But first of all, we'll test your sewing skills, get you to have a go on this machine. That's good. Start off Excellent. slowly. Um, learning how to straight sew a straight line, then work on to curves, and once that skill's been uh, adapted through the years, you, it just comes naturally. That's right. Done. The straight lines are good, but doing the shapes around here is a little bit tricky, so I'll get you to move out of the way and I'll show you how it's done. Right. Okay? <laughs> Kimber started out as an apprentice 32 years ago, and he has seen several of his staff move on to new and interesting positions. Former employees have moved on to design interiors for Toyota and super yachts, there are also great opportunities for starting your own business. It's good, they all line up. Did a good job of cutting it out. You've screened it nice and square, yeah. material was square, so everything sews together square. Yeah. Okay, we'll fit it now, eh? It's important that the vinyl is stretched out to key points to ensure that the material follows the contours of the seat so that there are no wrinkles. Okay. An experienced trimmer could have a new seat cover That's ready to go from start to it? finish in about five minutes. It's taken Jordan a bit longer than that, but he's definitely getting the hang of it. All right, let's have a look. That's it, push it forward. Done. There you go. Perfect job. Look at that, no wrinkles, no cuts. It's brand new. Yes, it is. Customer will be very happy with that. Yeah. Well done. Once Jordan gets more experienced, he'll be cutting large amounts at a time and sewing bulk orders that all have to be perfect. But for now, Jordan is off to meet with Apprentice Scott, who will be showing him how to fit carpet in a boat. Right, we've got this nice bit of carpet here to do, Jordan. Um, just give it a light spray on, on here, and then we'll give it a light spray on there. Jordan applies a two-pot adhesive to the carpet and floor to ensure a good bond. Um, get the carpet right into the corner, just, just push it in with the, with the knife. He trims the excess off with a Stanley knife and the job is done. Apprentices are introduced to all aspects of the business and are supported through their learning by an industry training advisor who keeps them on track to getting qualified. Yep, so we just need to go through your goal sheet. Well, once you have your national certificate in motor trimming, that skill can be used anywhere in the world. Take it anywhere you like. 
Sewing is a basic skill which all motor trimmers need. However, new technologies in bonding and welding are becoming more and more common. Charman motor trimmers and upholsterers use a high frequency welder to join fabrics together to create a watertight seal, which is ideal for marine applications. Okay, take it off now. That's it. That's your logo. All, all pressed in there, ready to go. Well done. Good job. That's good. Jordan has learnt a lot of new skills, so how did he do? I'd be pleased to see if he wanted to get into the trade, I'd be more than happy to take him on. He's, a, he's got good skill levels and took everything on very well. It's cool, it's fun. It was interesting to see how um, things come up and how they do or the interior and stuff like that, so it was cool. The industrial textile fabrication industry also includes manufacture of products like sails, tents, marquees, flags and banners. To become a technician in the industry, you will need to complete a MITO apprenticeship. Design skills are important and many products are designed using computer-aided design. Skills and techniques such as bonding and welding are transferable across many products and areas of the industrial textile fabrication industry. The national certificate will take approximately three years to complete, but you can finish earlier if you work hard and are committed to study. Well, thank you, Jordan, and all those who featured in today's program. Now these days there are literally thousands of careers to choose from, but that doesn't make the decision any easier. And so that's where we hope our programs will help you when it comes to making this all-important career decision. To help you even more though, Career Services has heaps of tools, tips and information available to you. And here's Sal and Up Next with some special advice for you now. What if you've done heaps of research, worked through your interests and subjects and still can't identify career direction? Perhaps you could come at it from a different angle. Ask yourself, do I want to work mainly with things, people, ideas or information? Then you ask yourself, what kind of things? What kind of information or people? Career Services Skill Matcher is a great tool to help you think outside the square. Check out careers.govt.nz for more. If you'd like more info about the careers featured this week or any of the careers featured throughout the show, all you have to do is jump on our program website at tvnz.co.nz slash just the job. Happy hunting, I'll catch you next week. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.